Hey guys, what's up? It's been a while. So, uh, let's see. Up to date. Let's get up to date and caught up to speed. So, let's see. Recently, I worked on uh, Hawaii Five O. Got to meet Jason Scott Lee, which is phenomenal. Uh, le let's see. Worked with uh, William Lee, who plays, I guess, the bad guy on the newest. Um, what's that flick? Uh, the new Red Dawn. <clears throat> so, worked on uh, Hawaii Five O. Was a blast. McGarrett, Dano, met all them. Uh, I played a prison inmate, so in one of the upcoming episodes I'll be, uh, you'll be watching, you can see that, and I have the picture, I'm looking up at it right now, the picture of uh, Jason Scott Lee and myself giving the shaka. We filmed at the prison, Halava Prison, uh, here on Oahu, and um, he plays an inmate, so that was really awesome, he was my childhood uh, idol. Uh, for those of you that do not know who Jason Scott Lee, he's uh, the guy who played Bruce Lee in Dragon, Dragon the Bruce Lee story, uh, he was in Rapa Nui. Jungle Book, uh, Soldier with Kurt Russell, and recently he plays um, Kaleo on Hawaii Five-0. He's a crooked cop. So that was a blast. That was different. We were uh, spent five days in the Halava Prison, uh, which is a prison uh, here in Hawaii, <coughs> located in the Halava area. And so we were separated from the real prisoners, but uh, we could hear him calling to us and everything. It was, it was something else. And... Uh, it was uh, pretty exciting to be in there, so I'm glad to be, have gotten out. We were there for like, each day was like 12 hours, just about, so that was long, intense, brutal filming. Um, so after that, I got to watch uh, The Hobbit. For those of you who have not seen The Hobbit, go and watch it. The book is awesome. Uh, I, actually, I, I like the book better than uh, all the other episodes, or all the other, uh, The Hobbit book is better to me than the other Lord of the Ring books. It was just, it was a really clean-cut adventure, I mean... It was really good writing. And not to say or take away from the other books, but it was just phenomenal. I loved it. Um, the armor, okay, for The Hobbit, the leather armor that the dwarves wore, the chain mail and everything just looks so f uh, fantastic and phenomenal. Um, you can't help but want to, I, I wanted to make it. I wanted to make it or at least see what I could do um, when it got out of there. So I thought what well, would be kind of exciting to make that could, that I basically materials that I can get or that you can get and work on that and put it together and make your own part of it at least and uh, for those of you who did watch Lord of the Rings do you remember when um, let's see Boromir died and Aragorn takes his gauntlet and adds it to his own armor um, as kind of a tribute to Boromir's uh, life uh, to himself so he took that and he acquired it and he put it with his own uh, weapons his own armor I thought that was a pr pretty good touch so What's what's kind of important out of uh, back in those days or those type of people, the armor, what would be important to make? You know, you're not going to really care about a shin guard or a boot or something. So I figured, why not make a, uh, a gauntlet, which I did. So I took the design that was used for Thorin Oaken Shields gauntlet. I drew it out, took a while, and used screenshots and everything and tried to measure it to my arm size and um, made the design. I copied it. And so that's what I'm going to show you today, what you need to make it. Okay. So what I did, let's see if I can get a shot of that. I drew it out as best as I can. Over here, it's cut off, but I actually have another piece of paper that matches up to that perfectly because the design that I measured was roughly about 13 inches long. Okay. And that would cover me from here to roughly about the end of my farm. So here to here. And so I measured it. And um, use that design to imprint onto, I, I redrew it several times onto a piece of paper. And then so from here, you have to draw it. Um, what I did was I drew this onto, this is 8 to 10 ounce leather, okay? You can see how thick, th thick that is. And it's pretty sturdy. It's pretty tough, okay? So I, I cut this piece out and I drew this, taped it on top of there, and lightly drew over it, leaving an imprint. And you can even, um, what I did was, uh, let's see, I dampened the leather just a little bit to leave an indentation. Um, well, you don't have to dampen it. You can leave it as is, but you may have to press a little harder. And um, transfer the design to draw like a, like a little imprint onto the leather. And from that point, I used a swivel knife, which I'll show you right here. This is my, uh, my cute little leather kit. So I drew that. This is your swivel knife. Okay, it's called the swivel knife swivel blade, and this comes off. Okay, the tips can be ceramic. This is a ceramic tip. Okay, and it's very sharp. You also have that same style in steel, 
and this is um, they all have different uses so this is more like a detail as you can see the shape of it comes to a point this is not so much as a detail but I still have been able to get good detail with this this is a steel blade okay very sharp uh, for this one you can strop it before you uh, you go cutting any le leather to resharpen it rehone it but it's, it's still like a razor um, so after you get your design onto the hard leather right here I would take my swivel knife and cut the design into it okay cutting the design into it pressing pretty hard okay the deeper the cut but don't penetrate the whole thing you want to get a good deep cut so that when you pound it with your mallet with your wooden hammer um, you can leave a good imprint and it and it separates the leather uh, deep enough and, and well enough that you can actually see the detail that you're hoping to get for instance here so see all this was cut prior and if I didn't cut it if I just drew it and pounded it it wouldn't separate like how this is right here so by cutting it and then taking my stencils and pounding it or my, my um, stamps I'm sorry stamps and pounding it um, it was able to leave a, a depression and depending on your stamp uh, tip that is what makes the, the look change okay you're gonna you're gonna change your looks for however you want okay let's see there's a lot there's a lot of um, other videos on here that you can check out um, not by me but other people that are really good at leather work I kind of do touch base on everything but I did use um, something like this which is hard really hard to see see that you can kind of tell all right so I use that anyway to um, get the design and just it takes a while so you have to be patient be very patient because you'll go crazy and you end up stamping your fingers or smashing your hand and then that's not going to get you anywhere you'll have swollen fingers like the dwarves but that won't help too much and as far as your hammer this is what I used um, I got it from a hardware store this they sell it for um, they sell it in Tandy on the websites. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. It's like a real hard leather. It says Garland Sacco Maine. Maine. So I guess it's made in Maine. Oh, yeah. Wicked cold down in Maine over here. And so that's that. <clears throat> Sweet bejesus, our lot. All right. So as far as the die goes, this is the one I use. What is that? Feebings? I uh, thought of using the. It says Feebings Leather Dye Tincture De Cure. I guess it's French. Um, navy blue, blue marine, danger, flammable, inflammable. But yes, uh, navy, navy blue, very nice color, and it's the same color that they use for that, as you can see. But a boom! Hey, yo, yo, come on, guys, we gotta make some, some, uh, something of these utes, you know. So, uh, so what I did was I used this uh, to puncture. But boom, okay, puncture the holes here so that I could sew the strap on the back side. Just the same way I punctured over here in this area on both sides. There, lad, right here. And let's see, you can kind of see it right there, okay. So I punctured that and uh, I still have to add the straps for that. And what I figured I can use are just some clips. You can either do it with buckles too. But I figured I can be able to just clip it on and off. I may sell it on eBay, depending. But um, that's it. I love it. Feels comfortable. Look at that. Now let's do the awkward silence. That was awkward, wasn't it? Okay, very good. So that being said, you'll need the hammer, the navy blue feebings uh, die, which you can get. You can get this on eBay. Okay, you can get that on eBay for like five bucks for one container. Um, you can probably find this on eBay or a hardware store. Actually, to be honest, I found the leather on eBay too. I buy my leather on eBay um, because they describe it pretty easily. You can also get it on Tandy, but since I live in Hawaii, we don't have a Tandy store yet, and I'm hoping to be able to open up a store that carries leather um, and a whole bunch of stuff here. I'd love to open up a store here. I'm trying to get the 
everything in the works um, to be able to open up special effects stuff. Not to be a special effects store, but to be able to sell leather stuff, polyurethanes, um, silicones, fake bloods for the movie industry. Um, you know, just to be like a go-to place. And that's what you want. You know, you want a, a go-to place. You know? you know what I'm saying? So, that's that. We, talk, we talked about this. In the next video, since I'd like to be able to do, <clears throat> I'd like to be able to make another one so that I could show you. Did, I, did my seat go down? My seat went down, didn't it? I feel a lot lower. Holy crap. How's that? I felt like I was a midget. Uh, well, dwarf. I'm sorry. That's politically incorrect. Small person. Small person. Or dwarf, depending, because actually I was making the dwarf uh, hobbit uh, armor. So, yeah, I could definitely say I'm a dwarf. See, watch this. Watch. <laughs> right? And then back to normal size. Okay. Anyway. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Um, I think that's it. And then... Um, Anything else I need to show you guys? Mm. I may be, I may show you guys how to paint. Uh, I have a blank Iron Man helmet that is primer. I may show you folks how to paint that in the Captain America colors, like in the upcoming Iron Man three. But that's still, that's I think that's a War Machine uh, design. So the armor is real similar to Iron Man, but they choose to make it a lot blockier, like it's not smooth. You know, it's, it's a lot more ergonomic uh, or less ergonomic effect. But I think that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you guys had a fantastic New Year's uh, Eve event. Great Christmas. I hope you folks got everything you wanted. Subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see. Like I said, next video, I may um, show you step-by-step uh, -step what to do to make a Thorin Oaken Shield gauntlet. But that's only if I can get enough views with this, okay? The more views, the more uh, the more I'm going to want to do it, okay? So just let's talk it out. Let's let's hug it out if you want. Let's hug it out, okay? Let's hug it out. Per entourage. All right. Aloha for now. Be safe and uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Aloha.